Hello, today I have for you the review of a very special fountain pen from my collection, an iconic fountain pen. It is the beautiful Lamy 2000. I will start my um, review with a short uh, history lesson. Practically, the history of the Lamy company starts in uh, 1930 when uh, Joseph Lamy a representative in Heidelberg, Germany, of the Parker Pen Company, uh, decided to launch his own company of fountain pens. He struggled almost 20 years with his small company. But all of that changed in 1952 when they introduced uh, the Lamy 27. Well, the Lamy 27 was a great success, but in the mid-1960s, Lamy thought of a new product to increase sales and demonstrate to the other big German manufacturer that the Lamy 27 wasn't just a one-hit wonder. Here comes in the scene Dr. Manfred Lamy, uh, this was the son of the company's father, which, uh, with, uh, which uh, joins the Lamy firm in uh, 1962 as a marketing manager. So from the gecko from 1962, he had uh, different uh, v uh, vision of uh, Lamy's uh, future. And uh, he had the chance in uh, 1966 to took over the control of the business from his father, Joseph Lamy. As I said, he had a vision of a new innovating product that uh, will put Lamy in the top of the German pen manufacturers. In 1966, he made some uh, fundamental changes in the product lines and in the design uh, department, hiring several ind industrial designers like Gerd Müller. Gerd Müller was practically the designer of the futuristic looking Lamy 2000. Müller was a designer that embodied the Bauhaus principle of a functional design and um, it the design this beautiful functioning piece. You must know that uh, Bachoff's principle of functional design is form follows function. They believe that the good design must be innovative. And you can see that the um, design of the Lamy 2000 for 1966, it was uh, quite innovative. It used some new materials which were um, recently discovered. In this case, it is uh, called uh, uh, polycarbonate and it's called macrolon. It was developed in the 1950s by uh, another German um, firm, Bayer, and uh, it was uh, an uh, innovative um, material for that time. Another good design is a design that makes a product useful. This is um, a fountain pen, uh, a writing instrument. It is uh, beautiful because it's uh, well executed and um, it is um, designed in every detail and um, Practically the care and accuracy in the design process show respect towards the consumer. We can see the work of uh, uh, Mueller in this uh, wonderful curves that um, this uh, design uh, had. And um, as I said before, the use of uh, the combination between the macrolone and the metal both uh, in the cap you can see the combination i will talk about the design elements as i uh, review the lamy 2000 and i want to mention that uh, the lamy 2000 
was initially priced in the catalog in 1966. Uh, this initially was priced at uh, 42 uh, Deutschmark. And this model, the Lamy 2730, was priced in the same catalog in 1966 at 22 Deutschmark. And the Lamy 99 was uh, priced in the same catalog at 14 and a half Deutschmark. So, the Lamy 2000 wasn't uh, quite a cheap fountain pen. But uh, it was the top of the line back then in 1966, and uh, uh, it uh, had a tremendous success. First of all, let's identify this Lamy 2000. I believe that uh, this particular piece is a very early piece, made between 1966, the first year when uh, it uh, reached the market, and... Uh, 1970s. So, why do I think uh, that uh, this Lamy 2000 is from that period? First of all, I will start with the cap. So, you can see the cap has uh, this particular imprint on it. It says uh, with major letters Lamy 2000, W point Germany and uh, this is a characteristic that um, few of the pens have. The second characteristic, you can see that um, the clip, the clip, it has a ball bearing at the end. And uh, the cap is plain, so you can't see on it uh, any Lamy imprints. Another clue, is um, at the end of the uh, piston knob this is a piston filler we can see the l logo from lamy these uh, four elements combine they uh, give us clues about the age of uh, this fountain pen and indeed this fountain pen is an early pen so I will compare it with other models from uh, that period. First of all, we have his um, older uh, brother, the Lamy 27, here. Okay. Next, we have uh, Mont Blanc 24. Next, we have a Mont Blanc 320. A Mont Blanc Meisterstück 144 and a Pelican Sovereign made at the end of the 80s. So you can see the different uh, sizes and uh, measure of the pens side by side. I will uh, leave you some uh, measurements of um, this fountain pen of Lamy 2000. So, as I told you, this beautiful, beautiful fountain pen is made of a material called macrolon. This is practically a plastic material made out of fiberglass. It has um, a light texture to it. It's uh, pretty nice to touch. It's a very resistant uh, material. And as you can see on this fountain pen, uh, this fountain pen has um, 50 years. So you can see that there are no scratches on it um, and uh, no cracks on it. Practically, this material developed by uh, Bayer was um, prone to scratches like uh, all other plastics but uh, the designer of this product uh, it releases in this brushed made finish so you can see the difference between because the top of the cap is made from the same material 
and it's quite a glossy cap i hope you can see it yes it's not made like this part so if they released it in this um, particular glossy finished it, it uh, was prone to scratches but uh, this matte matte finish was a um, good uh, choice in releasing this fountain pen the clip is made um, out of uh, aluminum is aluminum finished it is um, spring loaded it's a very functioning clip as i told you there are no lamy imprints on uh, this clip it um, it has uh, this um, pattern if you can see it so the clip is brushed aluminium and the brushes as you see are vertical oriented and the whole um, clip is very minimalistic and uh, very functional at the end of it you can see as i've told you this imprint lamy 2000 west germany uh, this is uh, practical um, the identifying uh, marks of the lamy brand and the other identifying mark is at the end of the pistol knob we have um, l this cap is uh, a friction fit cap it is uh, designed very well and it holds um, securely part of the design of this um, friction uh, fit cap are two small um, metallic pieces So there are two small metallic pieces, practically these um, stubs were, uh, uh, they are spring loaded. So when you push on them, they retract, look, push, they retract. They are um, designed to help in the gripping, in the posting of the clip. You can hear the noise that uh, this uh, makes. And um, it reveals the gripping um, uh, gripping part of the fountain pen. You can see again this brushed aluminium finished uh, grip part, which um, is vertically oriented, um, same as uh, with these vertically oriented brushes, same as in the clip of the cap. It has this uh, hooded nib. It's an, uh, it is a 14 uh, carat um, gold nib. And uh, it is uh, platinum plated. This uh, nib, uh, I hope you can see, it's an oblique medium nib. So it has um, um, an oblique point top point to it on the on the um, back side we can see the large breathing hole and the plain looking uh, feed i believe the feed is made of ebonite Again, simplicity and attention to details, a design, uh, the Bauhaus design. You can see how well it's integrated this, uh, this steel part with this macrolon part. So you can see the attention to details. Next, we can see we can see the very narrow faceted uh, view window which uh, does a fairly decent uh, job but um, let's face it this is uh, useless for example on uh, his uh, brother 
we had this ink window. So this is a proper ink window, a large ink window. At uh, this model, we have an uh, ink window, but um, um, it's not quite so uh, useful for uh, actually seeing the level of the ink remained in uh, in the barrel. So you can see that uh, the barrel has this uh, nice uh, curvature to it, which is another uh, design element by uh, Gert uh, Müller. And it's uh, the body is finished by this uh, piston turning knob, which is pretty uh, well integrated in the body. You don't uh, even see where the barrel meets the piston knob, so you can hold it like that, you don't even see, but as we approach, we can see this turning piston knob. So, um, we can see this turning piston knob, so this is a piston filler. It unscrews, and we can see on the ink um, we can see the piston knob on the ink um, barrel look at it we can um, insert it in the in an ink bottle and then we can turn back the piston knob which creates a vacuum and it pulls in the ink just make sure when you dip it in the ink bottle that this breathing hole is completely submerged in ink so the Lamy 2000 it is a superb design very minimalistic very functional and um, it's su it has such a great success in the um, German fountain pen market that even the great Mont Blanc had an answer for it. The Mont Blanc 220. You can see the same size, same material, macrolon, same friction caps, uh, similar ink windows. There are both piston fillers. They indeed have a slightly different nibs. The same easy system of opening the pen. Guess who won the battle? The answer is simple. The Mont Blanc 220 is out of production and the Lamy 2000 is still strong in the actual line of uh, Lamy fountain pens. So the answer is very simple. The Lamy 2000 is the winner. So why uh, had this model such a great success? The design was incredible for that time. It uh, still has a futuristic design even now. This is a plain fountain pen. It, ha it has some fancy gold trimmings. This is simple. Um, if you put it side by side uh, with a Meisterstück, it is a simple fountain pen. It uh, almost uh, draws no attention to it. You, the owner, are the only per person that knows that this is a gold nib because you can see uh, being a hooded nib and uh, it has no imprints on it and um, uh, it isn't gold it's um, so it isn't gold it's platinum plated so it hasn't the appearance of gold some uh, people that don't know fountain pens might uh, think that this is a quite cheap fountain pen well, it's not. It's not a cheap fountain pen. It's quite an interesting fountain pen. 
you can uh, take it uh, to work uh, and uh, not uh, be worried that uh, it will be stolen. Uh, this macrolon, this uh, resistant material, uh, um, you can um, don't abuse it because it's still a very fragile uh, writing instrument. But uh, uh, I believe that it's quite uh, resistant uh, to other materials. Another uh, interesting thing that uh, made this such a great fountain pen is the fact that you don't need tools to open it. So I will show you. You can unscrew practically the grip section over here and you can reach uh, the inside of the barrel. But if you have some time, I will show you how to unscrew the piston knob. So you've reached the end and you keep continuing on rotating in the same direction. You can see these cracks, but keep continuing this process until you can hear this little crack. So it opens and you can see this orange part. So you, can, you take this part and you leave it here. And with this part, you insert it in the, here. You grab the turning mechanism and you grab it. And you can see that um, the round um, screwing uh, plastic part is out. And now you can gently pull out pull out and this is the cork is very useful when you need to this is the barrel it's quite uh, useful when you need to clean it or grease it so uh, voila this is um, Lamy 2000 please stay tuned for the writing sample So uh, this will be the writing sample. As you can see, I've unscrewed the piston knob. It is right at the end. So I emerge this in uh, ink. I make sure that the breathing hole is emerged in ink. And after that, I unscrew the piston knob. Okay, now I um, will um, closely save some um, ink and after that I use a tissue to wipe the fountain pen, so I wipe it. As you can see on the ink um, window we we have um, ink in it okay we put the cap back on the bottle and we are ready for the writing sample so this is the Lamy 2000. This particular model is an early model made between 1966 and 1970. It has an oblique medium 14 carat nib. It's a piston filler made in Germany so
so um as an oblique medium you can see that it draws this um, thin line and this um, broader line in the other direction is uh, it isn't uh, a flex nib but um, it is a good writer and I love writing with it I love the metallic grip section uh, here and um, it is a good design element because it feels quite well uh, writing with it if they used the same mackerel material here which um, uh, it's a heat inducting material I believe that uh, this wasn't uh, such a comfortable um, writing uh, instrument so uh, thank you for watching uh, this long review and um, have a nice day.